welcome to this tutorial where we are going to be talking about the muscles of our anterior abdominal wall, their names and a bit of basic info about them. So first things first, the picture I have up on the screen here is viewing the body anteriorly, so from the front, which would make sense as we're learning about our anterior muscles. Now we'll just highlight this segment down here which is what we're focusing on, the abdominal wall. So our abs, what is unique about them? Well, how about the fact that they actually have no bony support? Unlike the muscles of our thorax or our upper chest region which have the ribs, a sternum, clavicle, scapula, and even humerus as the attachment points. So these muscles are going to need to be very strong to keep you standing upright. Now the only bone we have in the body in this area between our thorax and our pelvis is our spine. So instead of this reliance on the bone, the anterior abdominal walls rely on the fact that they are multi-layered and use fascia and aponeuroses heavily. Aponeuroses being large, uh, broad, flat tendons, and fascia being bands of connective tissue fibers mostly made out of collagen that help to separate these muscles into compartments and reduce friction between them. Now let's have a look at what these individual muscles are. The first one will be your rectus abdominis. And I'll just outline the rectus abdominis here. So it's going to be the most medial of your abdominal muscles. So the one closest to the midline of your body. And it's a type of muscle that is a strap with tenderness insertions. So it's medial and also superficial, meaning top layer. And if we have a think for a moment about the types of movement we can achieve with this muscle, well, they're going to be the prime mover of spine flexion. A spine flexion is exactly what you do when you are doing a sit-up. So when somebody does hundreds and hundreds of sit-ups, the muscle in between these tenderness insertions is going to hypertrophy, giving people that ab and flat stomach look. And the feature I've just highlighted in pink here is called the rectus sheath. The rectus sheath is just going to be part of the aponeuroses of your other abdominal muscles and we're going to talk about all of those right now. The first one being your external oblique. Oh, I'm outlining the external oblique area here in the purple. So this is your external oblique. We can see the muscle on the lateral portion and I'll just highlight down the bottom there part of the aponeurosis of the external oblique. So we have the muscle on the lateral portion and toward the middle is where we are going to uh, link into that rectus sheath. So of our lateral abdominal muscles, the external oblique is going to be the most superficial once again meaning closest to the surface of the body. And the muscle fibers, the individual fibers of our external oblique are going to run obliquely. So they're not running horizontally or vertically, they're running on a diagonal and we call that oblique. Now thinking again about what type of movement this muscle will help us achieve, we have to remember that we have the external obliques on both sides as opposed to our rectus abdominis which we have in the middle. So if we were to uh, flex just one of these external obliques, so one, and I'll show one here as well, that's going to aid our back muscles in trunk rotation, so rotating your core. And if we uh, activate both of those muscles at the same time, it's going to help our rectus abdominis in spine flexion. So it's also going to help when you're doing sit-ups. And now we can move on to our next oblique, which is the internal oblique. So our internal oblique is going to be a muscle that's intermediate to the rest. And I'm just outlining it here. So I've outlined it here in the red. That's going to be part of the aponeuroses of that internal oblique as well. So I'll just write that now, aponeuroses. And once again, I'm going to say straight away that it's intermediate to our other muscles, meaning it's in between. 
it's not uh, superficial so it's not laying on top and it's not the deepest muscle either so it has to be intermediate. Now the fibers of our internal oblique are going to be running medially and slightly uh, superior as well so slightly upward. So I'll just draw that now. The fibers we can see are running in the complete opposite direction to what the fibers of your external oblique are and we'll talk about why that is at the end of this video. And as far as the uh, movements are concerned, they're exactly the same as your external oblique. So if you were to activate one, it would help you with trunk rotation and both at the same time would help you with spinal flexion. So same as external. Now we've made it to our last and deepest muscle and it's going to be the transversus abdominis. So transversus abdominis, I'm just outlining here. We can see it right there, so in the blue. Our transversus abdominis, like I said straight away, is our deepest muscle. So the deepest within our body, the closest to our internal organs. And its muscle fibers are going to be running horizontally this time. So I'll draw that up there as well. These fibers are running horizontally. So completely different to our other muscles. We have the rectus abdominis, the fibers run vertically. The external oblique, the fibers run medially and downward. The internal oblique, they run medially and upward. And the transversus abdominis, they run horizontally. And now we can finally figure out why that is. If we think about the construction of plywood, there are several sheets with the grain running in all separate directions and this is going to greatly increase the strength and ability to resist tension in the same way that the directional changes of these abdominal muscle fibers will do as well. So lastly, the movement that our transversus abdominis is going to help us achieve is to compress our abdomen or compress the contents of our abdomen. So when we are squeeze our stomach muscles and are compressing everything inward like this, so compressing everything inward, we're using our transversus abdominis. And that's going to cover all of the muscles of our anterior abdominal wall, uh, their function and uh, a little bit about them. I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.